What's up YouTube and welcome back for the SDI build. Uh, if you're new here, uh, recently I've been doing an EJ257 build in my garage uh, for a friend of mine, Tyler. Uh, we're ready to move on to the cylinder heads and prepare them for installation and probably torque one on today, uh, at least for the video so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so I, I've, I've already pr previously gone ahead and cleaned up the, the cylinder heads as best as I can. Uh, I mean, I could get them a little better, but uh, the way they are, I don't, I don't want to lay my tool on them any longer. Just enough to get that old gasket material off. And if you can't feel anything, you're usually really good. So uh, the next step with this is actually to drill it out. And uh, I need to drill, drill that 12 millimeter hole out to a half inch or 13 millimeter. And I intend to do that right here. Um, so like I said, I've already got the gasket surfaces all cleaned up, the intake, the exhaust, the deck, and uh, I've already cleaned out the combustion chambers quite a bit. I, I, you know, I spent quite a time, a bit of time picking out the heavy carbon and just let them soak in some throttle intake cleaner, air intake cleaner, and use the uh, toothbrush just to really break up some of that stuff and wash it out of there. So as I go to drill these, all I'm basically going to do is we'll probably cover this banjo bolt, but just kind of cover the area like that and a lot of the shavings are probably going to get drawn up out of the hole and a couple of them will fall down through and I'll have to make sure everything's clear and free of the head after I'm finished, but uh, it should be fairly easy I would imagine. So just a couple things before I get started. I decided to set up uh, just a couple saw horses and a board to sit the head on, keep all those aluminum shavings away from the workplace or where I'm storing, you know, the lifters, the camshafts, all that stuff. The other thing is, I'm ready to drill these holes by hand. And if you are a little bit uh, wary about me doing that, then you better not watch because. Uh, I could see how a lot of people would want to actually take this machine shop and actually have the holes drilled or at least set it in a bench press to drill the holes. Because of the amount that's got to come off, I'm not, I'm not at all hesitant to do this. The other thing is the studs and bolts don't actually position a cylinder head. It's the dowels. The position a cylinder head with on when it sits, it sits on the block. The bolts just torque it in place. But if you don't have these dowels in place when you're back together, you're gonna suffer some head shift, and that's when the this uh, compression ring inside the head gasket can actually start shifting around and prematurely wear out. Uh, and I know that from experience. So yeah, I've got a feeling these are gonna take a few passes with the drill. It's probably not going to drill very nice. It is aluminum, um, but just a you know I've got a variable setting on this on this air drill that I so I can turn down the air exactly where I want it so I can get a nice low speed and a, a nice clean cut hopefully. Um, so I'm going to set up the camera and uh, drill a hole. Now you can see that that went down through pretty easy, uh, took quite a bit of material off, but uh, they're just light shavings and really the even though the drill bucked a little bit, it, it, it went down rather easily. So I've got a, uh, I've got one of the studs that I left kind of just loose and uh, basically I just want to see if it'll drop down through the hole and it does. And even the, the threads are nice and nice and firm, nice and tight going through. So our hole is very close to the 13 millimeter we want to be. And just an ex as an example, 
here's the crank bolt. I'm pretty sure it's an M14 bolt. And it will not drop down into the hole. So as long as I can smoothly pass the drill through all the other holes, it'll be good. So I've got the cylinder head back over onto this table, clean rag, a reasonably clean, clean rag that doesn't have the, any of the shavings in it. Uh, I've gone through and cleaned all the, the shavings that I could get with the rag. They're so sharp they usually just stick right to a rag and pull right out of there. Um, very easy to get them. And so I've I just gotta continually go along, make sure I've got everything out of there that I can see. I gotta, I usually grab a nice light and make sure I've got everything. And then I'll grab a bit of, uh, probably even air intake cleaner or a brake clean, and just wash out a little bit of the gallery. Uh, you know, trying not to get it down into the valve seals at all, but just a very light rinse, hopefully everything drop out through the bottom. And then I'll take the air and I'll blow out all the holes and then I'll grab this rag and, and throw it out because whatever's left on it's garbage and uh, then I'll be able to test fit this head. So I think now I'm going to actually do a test fit of the head. I'm just going to make sure that it will go on over top of all those studs and as long as it does it'll come back off. I'll clean both the deck surface of the block and the head just one last time and then we'll get ready to install the head gasket and put the head in place. So I want to see how uh, how this actually goes. So I've been having some difficulty setting the head down over the top of the studs and really I, I don't see why it has to be done that way. I know the studs will go through the head and uh, I don't think I'm going to have a problem threading them in after installing the head. So what I'm going to do is take out these five studs, leave the center one and uh, put the head, clean up everything, give one everything one last cleaning. I'm going to place the head gasket in place and I'm going to sit the head on and I'm going to wind in these bolts by hand and as long as everything goes well then I'm going to be ready to torque up. So using a head gasket Tyler went with Cosworth gaskets obviously you know for your big builds because uh, I know they are pricey. Uh, I'm not sure how many layer they are but uh, looks like a good quality gasket. Be four layers to it. It's got their uh, name engraved in the first layer. Kind of neat. And now I'm looking at the gasket and it appears the center holes are too small. And sure enough, they are. These outer holes, the gasket will, will pass over the studs, but those two center holes need to be opened up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So with a little camera magic, got the same gasket. And it'll now go into place. Uh, you might be wondering how I did that. It's tight, but 
I wasn't going to take a drill bit to a head gasket, especially not here in my garage. The way to do this is to literally apply a lot of pressure to the gasket holding it together and then a lot of patience and elbow, gr elbow grease and literally round file the hole out to the size that you need it. Because I, I got a feeling if I try and put the drilled bit through there, it, it might even tear the gasket or bend it. And uh, I'm not, I'm not going to risk that. So I only have the one more hole, hole to do on this gasket. And uh, it should fit on perfectly. So I've got the other hole filed out. And everything's nice and clean. When you're, when you're holding it in that pinched position and you're filing down, pretty much everything falls off. But you do want to make sure that you get the gasket free of anything, even your fingerprints. And, you know, I actually took the air and just kind of blew it through the gasket just to make sure there is no debris in it, but I'm sure there's not. So uh, with both holes drilled or filed out, now I can uh, go ahead and place this in onto the block. And get ready to install the head next. deck of the head has been cleaned really well. It's sitting there. Now that the head's basically in place sitting on the head gasket, I'm going to go ahead and wind in the rest of the studs and hopefully everything goes okay. If you haven't watched the past videos, I had to re-thread the, the holes for the block. So I don't know, the head stud doesn't really want to thread down in there. I think it's a combination of the, you know, just the uh, tightness of the way the threads are and of course the tightness of how tight these holes are. So if the, the bolt has to do any kind of wobble to get, get threaded down in there, it really doesn't have any space to wobble so it starts to jam. That's my thoughts, anyway. So. Maybe I'll try another hole. But I don't know what good that'll do me. If I can't thread it into one of them, then I've got a problem. And I mean, it's even going tight in this hole, so I'm not playing that game again. We're going to have to slip this head over the head studs. If I have to open up these holes some more, then I will. I'll, try. I'll just try and fit this on again. It's getting there. It's it's getting really tight. Uh, it's probably just starting to hang up on those threads a little bit. I think I'm just going to give it some uh, light hits to see if I can get it to go down into place. It's home. Just imagine if I had forgotten to put in the head gasket. These are actually a different size. They're not. They're not fourteen. They're not fourteen millimeter by twelve point. You actually need a nine sixteenths, and I hope I just have a deep enough socket, which I'm pretty sure I do, to fully tighten these down. So it's very similar to torquing a, reg a regular style. Subaru head except we don't loosen anything and there's much less steps. Uh, the torque setting is a lot more basic, a lot more like just an older engine would be. No degree wheel needed here.
Okay, so the first pass, 30 foot pounds. This is number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Second pass. 60 foot pounds. Number one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Third pass, 90 foot pounds. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. And number six. And that's one fully torqued head. So I guess really got to understand, like I'm a, I'm a repair technician. I did repair on, on automotive for like 20 years, close to 20 years. I mean, we, we could have sent the heads out, had them drilled, had them resurfaced and uh, spent quite a bit more money than what, what I would actually do it for. So I knew it was possible. I knew it was something I can get together. And yeah, it was a little challenging, but it is together. It's fully torqued. It's going to stay on there. I'm not worried about it at all. And that's just what it is. This isn't Cosworth or Cobb or Pro Drive or, you know, Rally Sport. This is homebrew Subaru, and this is the way it, it needs to be done in my garage. And uh, if I'm not willing to actually do it because I don't think I can, I know that right away. I'm not going to take on something that I don't think I can accomplish and finish and get out of my garage the way it's supposed to. So uh, I'm confident in this and everything went. It took a little bit more to get it actually the way I want it, but it is the way that I want it and uh, it's going to work 100%. So yeah, I'm thinking probably Sunday's video, I'm going to do a little tool unboxing. I've got a new tool that I need to do for this job, and I might as well do a little, you know, side video for it. And I, there's a lot of stuff that I actually need to do, including torquing on the other head and kind of going through the same mess that I just did. So, you know, I'd probably continue this build next Thursday, and the next part for the build will come out then. And uh, But until then, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.